Stick blades, razor sharp skates, and flying pucks. These are the perils that face any goaltender. And just think, they didn't always wear a mask. Hi, I'm Rebecca Brayton and welcome to WatchMojo.com. And today we'll be learning more about the history of the goalie mask. Tell us about the creation of the goalie mask. In the early days of hockey, uh, wasn't the same game, wasn't the same uh, vigorous or rough game. Puck stayed along the ice, goalie stood up, and so they didn't need it. But by 1930 or 1940, the game changed. The guy shot the puck harder, the sticks were improving a little bit, and goalies were getting hurt like mad. When did the goalie mask become commonplace? The fiberglass goalie mask was invented by a Montrealer named Bill Birchmore in 1959 and worn by Jacques Plant. After Jacques Plant wore his, there was still, you know, you know, there was resistance before and some resistance afterwards. Hockey was a team with, uh, the NHL anyways, had six teams at that time, so you had two or three wearing a mask and by 1967 still some guys holding out by 1968 a couple of hardcore guys Glenn Hall and Johnny Bauer put masks on everyone was wearing them by 1970 there was one coop that sort of held out why was there so much resistance to it initially sports guys are tend to be conservative uh, and they had old-fashioned ideas really dumb macho ideas some goalies didn't want to be perceived as not being brave enough did it change the way goalies played the modern mask that we call the combo today, it's a very bulletproof piece of high engineering. That allowed goalies to change their technique a little bit. We, had, we, we saw in the late 1980s goalies start playing something called the butterfly. That's where they drop to their knees on every shot. To do that, with some of the guys who could really fire the puck at that time, you had to be wearing a pretty good goalie mask. What about the evolution of the goalie mask? You mentioned the, the combo mask, but obviously we saw something else before that. We saw different kinds in between. Uh, the first mask was the molded fiberglass mask. What made that mask work was that it hugged your face, so when you moved your head, uh, your, your eyes were still in the eye holes and you could still see. The Achilles heel of that uh, mask was that your eye was exposed. The mask got bigger, it wrapped around the head more, started to become a bit more of a helmet. still had the eye hole things too until around the mid-1980s where we, we invented this mask called the Combo. Uh, it, incor it incorporated um, really the fiberglass mask and the cage. Today we see goalies personalizing their masks with uh, airbrush designs. Let's talk about the evolution of mask art. When uh, mask art first started, we saw some very plain things. Uh, solid colors, very simple logos, some stripes that maybe match the team jersey. Now you have airbrushing and you can paint whatever you want. Can you give us a few more examples of memorable masks? The most memorable mask of all is Jerry Cheever's very plain stitches mask that he started to do as a joke. He was a great joker who actually hated to practice and oh, he was always looking for a way to um, to get out of things and for fun once he, he, he put a stitch where a puck had clipped him. He had a great sense of humor. He said that the puck that hit him actually could, wouldn't, have, wouldn't have hurt a canary, but uh, he, would, he pretended he was injured to get out of practice and when his coach uh, forced him back onto the ice, he had to put some fake stitches there. Everyone laughed, but that caught on with people. Art is a matter of taste in, in traditional arts and I think goalie mask art is too. Thank you very much. <laughs>